exotic strain, and that will turn kind of reddish too. So it's a little different color of red, and it's not nearly as much of the stem, and it's not as obvious. But if if you're the sort of person that is looking at a field guide and you're like, well, is there any reddishness? And then you look at it, if you're looking for red, you sometimes can find it in the exotic strain. So that's why that's not one of the best traits. So, but that leaf sheath. Um, and again, later in the season is when that really starts to break down and makes the difference much more obvious. Um, another difference that is not one of the best ones to use, but um, when you see both of them, and I'll, I'll carry this, I'll carry some of these with me when you go buy the native one, the, um, the exposed stems, so once you take the leaf sheaths off on the invasive one, are not as smooth and shiny as they are on the native one. Um, but if you're just looking at the exotic one, it still feels kind of smooth. Um, there are some ridges on it running up and down, and you can feel those, and they're supposed to be more obvious on the invasive one than the native one. But again, on both of them, if you're really trying, you can feel them. So that's why that's not the best thing to use. Um, other things on the invasive one. Um, so it's not necessarily the size of the seed heads or how tall the plants are or anything like that, but there are little parts of the seed head that you can measure that are good characteristics. So if you look at your sheet, I think they have asterisks too. It says lower gloom length and upper gloom length. And that's that sounds difficult, um, and it is in that it's tedious. These are small things to measure if you really want to look at those. Um, but what those are, so this, this basically had a whole bunch of flowers on it. Um, but if you sort of deconstruct this down to the very end of a, a branch um, that has maybe a, a single flower on it, basically. Um, and this is something that is going, uh, going to be hard to show you, especially if any wind blows. And I didn't get to go look. This is this is also something that is easiest seen maybe in October or November because these start breaking down a little bit. But um, the glooms on a grass are they're sort of like a little. There is a flower here, so this is so there's several orders of branching in here, and I've gone all the way out to the end, and there are these little sort of leafy bracts. And so I've got it on my finger here so you can see there's a long thing, a really short thing, and an, an intermediate length thing mm -hmm. on there. The, I don't think I see the tree. I see. There's a tiny one, a long one, and a medium one. Okay, thanks. And I'll send you guys the link that has a good... Got it. Oh, okay. Now I can yeah, see it. There's a that, tiny one, better. a long one, and a medium. Right. So the image of that. Like the Im there's an image in that in that magnified. link link that'll points to these two and shows you what they are. Okay. But um, the bottom two. So if you if you if you get yourself out to this furthest out part of the inflorescence to where you have just something like this, the bottom two bracts are glooms. So they have measurements there for the first and the second gloom. The first gloom is the one at the bottom. It might say first gloom or bottom gloom. That's the one that developed first because plants grow you know, from the inside out. So the bottom one, and that one's smaller. Um, and then the second gloom is longer. And if you look at this really closely, it's, it's attached slightly above. And then this really long one is a lemma. Um, and that's in between the glooms and you can ignore that. You can pull that thing out and just not worry about it or whatever. Um, but it's, critical that you don't accidentally measure the lemma because that's long and it can throw you off. But if you measure those those glooms, they're usually a pretty good um, distinguisher. And I would actually recommend measuring several, but I'm going to take out my hand lens. I have a little um, ruler tape to it. And I'm just going to kind of do this crudely. But, um, and you need millimeters for this sheet but the the um that first little tiny gloom is a little over two millimeters long here and then that uh second gloom is about four and a half millimeters long okay so on the on the on the native one the lower glooms 
on the native one are almost always more than four. This was two and a half. On the introduced one, they're almost always less than four. It's two and a half. So that, that lower gloom is consistent with the non-native, the invasive one. The upper gloom on the native one is almost always greater than six. Um, they have the full range there. So you might see as low as 5.5, but most of them will be more than six. This is why we also usually will measure more than one. Um, on the introduced one, they're mostly less than six. This is four and a half. Okay, so the lower gloom and the upper gloom are consistent with the introduced one. So is that leaf sheath. Okay, so we can be pretty confident about this. We've looked at three of three really good characters. And I would recommend, so of the things that have asterisks here, um, try to get at least two looked at and ideally three. So, but we can also look at the stem density in here. Um, this is really <coughs> dense. Sure, there are a few other plants that can grow in here, but this is very dense. When we see the native stuff, especially when we see some bigger patches of it, you'll see the difference. Um, so that's another characteristic. So we've got four things. Ligule length. So we can't measure that right now. That's something you measure during the growing season. So uh, we looked at the sheaths, where the she and the sheath goes up along the stem. Um, the ligule is where it goes at a right angle out into the blade, and there's this little membrane. Um, and this is something you can Google ligule and get an idea for what that is. But those have mostly broken down, and that's not a good thing to measure this time of year. But that's something you could measure if it was maybe earlier than the ideal time. If you're out here in July or August, that's something you could look at pretty easily. Um, so at that time of year, you might look at ligule length and, and look at the sheaths or something. Um, or if the flower heads haven't developed yet. You want those to be fully developed before you're measuring anything. But, okay, so this is exotic Phragmiton. So this is bad, and this is a bad location for it, obviously, because it's at the headwaters up here. And all the fuzzy stuff, um, those are actually attached to the seeds, and the seeds are blown by the wind. Um, and so they have, and they'll stick to us a little bit, so brush yourselves off. Um, so yeah, um, having seen this, now we're gonna walk around, and there are a couple spots where we'll go by a little bit of the native stuff, um, but we'll go a little further, and we'll be able to see it and look at it closely, but um, the patches are small. You, When we go further, you'll see some bigger patches of it and be able to compare them to this sort of density. Um, but this would be hard to walk through. Just keep that in mind. So Paul, have you been from here down to the spring, you didn't see any of the native left? Um, well, I don't, I can't or, say I mean, for sure far, there's yeah. no native uh, mixed in here. Anyway. On the other side, that's exotic. I looked on the other side yesterday, what you're seeing straight across there, that's right. exotic too. Um, and yeah, a lot of times the, the exotic one looks more robust and just has a different look to it. But man, uh, look at characteristics because that there can always be a site that has that's nutrient poor or rich that can make them look funny. And do you know of any occurrences of the native that did become a little over aggressive? And you know, because some of our native plants, sure, they get aggressive. And I would I, mean? uh, I would say in a relatively undisturbed wetland, that's unlikely to happen. Um, in a place that's had disturbance and other natives have been eliminated, it might grow really densely. Um, but that's less a problem of the Phragmites than it is of the disturbance, you know. Um, right. I just wanted, oh, another characteristic. Um, and we'll see it some on the native. This isn't, this is, so on the native one, um, there are sometimes there are really distinct black dots and that's a fungus that you only see on the native one, but you don't always see it. So if you see it there, that's something you can use. On the exotic one, sometimes you'll see black patches of mildew, which are not the same thing. So I'm going to take this with us in case we find some black dots. Um, and sometimes black dots can also be caused by insects poking through and making a wound. Um, so that's still the exotic, even though it has the black dots. Yeah, because these are not really... Not we'll see, fungus. if we can find them on the native, we'll be able to put we'll them next to each them. other. Yeah, okay. If I can get this. Yeah, see, see if... I can get a picture of this real quick for my purposes. So you're distinguishing black dots from mildew, and the black dots well, are, are... these are really sort of irregular black dots, and they're from mildew. On the native one, there are really distinct 
black dots sometimes. Oh, I'm not on macro. Caused by insects poking uh, through? Um, well, they're caused by a fungus on the native one. Fungus. You can. There's another cause of spots though that aren't that are sort of irregular, and those can be from insects that have, you know, stuck mouth parts through and made an injury. Okay. So they're both it's the same species genus and S same genus species. and species just different subspecies okay. and uh, so it's a species that's distributed really broadly there's another subspecies that grows on the Gulf Coast but they're genetic they've been genetically isolated for a long time and they're distinct and have different traits um, and even though they're the same species and just subspecies um, yeah it seems that hybrids even are rare and it's the experts that have observed the one or two rare instances of a hybrid, which is all that has been documented in the country. So that's how they, rare they are, um, at least when they've done genetic tests. Um, not even They're not even sure that the hybrids are fertile. The hybrids might be sterile. If you got a hybrid, it could still make a clone that causes a problem, but it, it's not going to spread by seed. Maybe. <laughs> at least it seems they suspect that. So that's a, that's a maybe. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, Any thanks closing you. thoughts? Let's go, let's go to the next site. Let's kill this. <laughs> well, I've got